So I'm really excited uh, to welcome the designer advocate team at Figma. Uh, we have Joey, Thomas, and Anthony joining us for this interactive session. Hey, folks. Hi, everyone. Hey, all. Thanks for having us here today. Hopefully, everyone can see our deck. I feel like that's the obligatory thing that you have to say when you start sharing your screen. Uh, and people in the chat will uh, let us know if, uh, if you can't. Um, Anyways, uh, today's presentation is sort of like where there's going to be an interactive component that you can sort of uh, do alongside um, as we sort of share some of our sort of like tips and uh, learnings from um, how we use Figma at Figma and how uh, we've seen some of the community come together uh, and use Figma. But maybe first we'll start with some introductions uh, and I'll kick it over to, to Anthony to, to kick things off. Thanks, Tom. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Anthony Despezio. I'm one of the designer advocates. Uh, at Figma, and uh, you might be wondering what a designer advocate does, uh, but mainly what we do is we work closely with uh, our users and our customers to share best practices, give feedback, uh, and really just try and foster design creativity uh, within the Figma communities. Uh, before being a designer advocate, I was a product designer for a long time, uh, engineer before that as well, uh, and just really excited to be here. And then, hey, I'm Joey. I'm uh, also a design advocate, of course, at Figma. And um, yeah, I've been using Figma for a long time now, since like 2016 or so, before it was actually public. And I uh, got to know the Figma team really well and just really fell in love with the tool. Um, I'm a product designer by trade, spent a number of years over in healthcare, and uh, joined Figma just because I, I don't know, I fell in love with it. And it was really exciting to show everyone uh, what the tool can do and uh, excited to walk through a couple of examples today. Cool. And hey, everyone, I'm Tom Lowry. I'm a designer advocate as well. Um, I've been on the team for a little over a year and a half now. And uh, like Anthony and Joey, uh, I was working as a designer uh, prior to joining Figma, um, helped adopt Figma on two of the teams that I was working on. And again, uh, really fell in love with the product. Um, in case you missed sort of like my little intro at the beginning of the conference, uh, one of the really uh, fun things was um, as I was starting to sort of like talk and interact with more uh, people from Figma Online before I joined. Uh, it was actually a Design X event that I went to where I got to meet a whole bunch of my coworkers or who became my coworkers um, at a Design X event, which was really exciting. So uh, we're super happy to to be here today and uh, for everything that uh, Preet and the rest of the Design X team has been doing for the design community. Um, maybe just like in the chat, uh, we can try to like assess. Uh, you know, what's everyone's experience level from Figma? Like I've never heard of it um, to uh, I'm an expert and I could probably run the session. Are you all seeing some, some numbers coming through? Maybe just throw some numbers in the chat. One being never heard of it, four being expert. Um, if not, we're gonna assume that you're all experts. Hey, I see a past coworker in the chat. Hey, Peter. Thanks so much for joining today. Cool. Ah, there we go. There's all the answers coming in. We got some twos, we got some threes, some zeros. I think I saw a few experts in there. Cool. Um, for those of you who maybe um, don't know as much about Figma, I'll just give you sort of like a quick sort of like overview of the product. Uh, we make a design tool that lives in the cloud. Um, you can access it in your browser. You can access it in a desktop app. Um, but the real sort of beauty of this is that sort of like Figma's default mode is being collaborative uh, and in a centralized place where everyone can access the work that, that you're doing. Anthony will build on this um, a little bit more, but uh, one of the things that we've tried to do is that we've noticed that there's been a lot of people that are trying to do um, a whole bunch, use a whole bunch of different tools to sort of like support different parts of their product development process. And we've tried to bring a lot of those key areas um, into Figma. So everything from um, being able to sort of like do your sort of like uh, ideation to preparing more high fidelity mockups to making those mockups interactive in the form of a prototype. Uh, and then finding ways to support all of the people that are going to influence that process um, along the way. Awesome. Thanks, Tom. 
Uh, yeah, so just want to mention, uh, as Tom said, there's just some really great advantages to, to uh, some of the things that we're doing here at Figma. Uh, these things may seem even almost transparent at times, so it's nice to just bring them out and sort of remember what some of the things, uh, the advantages that we're going to be taking, that we're going to be looking at today, especially when it comes to some of the, the files and, and things that you'll get to, to play with and uh, bring back to your teams as well. Um, the first one here is just the idea that um, everyone is accessing the same file. Again, very basic sounding in the in the concept, but uh, when you think about how distributed file systems are working now, there is certainly uh, a barrier for other people to be getting into the file, especially people who don't necessarily work on your teams, right? We have very uh, advanced design tools that can require a lot of software that you have to install and, and um, different parts that you need to have access to. And while that might be great for designers, it certainly does limit who can actually get involved into your file. So we certainly look towards trying to have an, a, an experience where developers, UX writers, researchers, um, uh, product managers, any other stakeholders can just get in and quickly work and, and uh, move forward with um, helping to create the great products and, and great designs that you're trying to, to actually create. The other thing there is just that um, we the, the cloud-based platform uh, really has a lot of advantages as far as the ability to work across multiple different operating systems and across multiple different browser types. Many of the people using Figma do not have the luxury of the latest and greatest when it comes to the computer or operating system or even browser experience that they can that they can utilize. And so we've really tried to make that uh, an experience that is just going to be uh, easier for everyone. Um, I personally was pretty skeptical of the idea of browser-based performance <laughs> when I first started using Figma. Um, and I, I got to say, it's it's amazing to sort of how how quick and smooth and, and it works. And I think obviously that's become pretty self-evident at this point with the number of people that are that are in there and getting in and using the tool. Uh, and then I think the last piece is just that, uh, again, just to remember that, uh, you know, things are uh, things are not falling out of date, you know, the, the moment that you're synchronizing something, it's, it's necessarily falling out of date, and we can just keep everything up to date directly within the files. And it's easy to bring other people into the process. So we wanted to actually open up a file for everyone to play around with today. Um, so you can see the URL there that you have on the screen. Uh, this is going to be a Figma file for all of us to explore together. Uh, so if we hop into that file, you're going to see uh, that there's going to be a couple prompts for you as far as uh, we would love you to just draw some things and an area for you to ask some questions, uh, as well as please put in your, your name. We'd love to know where you're from. Uh, you know, just a few other pieces of information there. If, you, if you've got a picture of your work from home setup or even a drawing of your work from home setup, please go in and add that. Uh, and definitely an area for also just like creating something that really represents you down at the bottom. So you guys can see this right now, everybody hopping into the file, right? <laughs> this is, is one of those experiences where, um, and, and keep in mind that, you know, when we say something like uh, collaboration, we don't necessarily mean just this type of multiplayer experience. And, and I can certainly tell you there are times when I go to the hide cursors button because it can be overwhelming. But this is one example of uh, how you can really start to open up design and, and make it something that's accessible to, to everybody, uh, not just the design team and not just the designers on your team, but hopefully get your whole team engaged. So we'll right. we'll come back to uh, we'll come back to that file periodically and see what you all you've all created. Um, but yeah. And as Tom had mentioned earlier, you know, collaboration isn't really something that you opt into with Figma. Uh, it's certainly the, the default mode for how we work. And as a former designer, I mean, one of the things that I was always telling myself and always wanting to be doing was just I want to get people looking at the work that I'm doing earlier and more often, right? This is that sort of scary moment of <laughs> needing to open up the door or come down from the mountain. You know, like you always just want to run off as the designer, make something perfect, come back and be like, here it is. But we know deep down that that's not how the design process works. And that while it might be a bit of a, of a groan to get through that to actually have feedback earlier, get people involved, get them involved in the story and actually help build something together that you're going to end up with something that's, that's a product that is uh more representative of the people who actually want to use it and something that you can actually say that you created together and that actually other people are invested in as well. So uh, with that, I'm going to actually pass it over to, to Joey to uh, talk a little bit more about how that collaboration works within a remote team. Thanks so much, Anthony. Um, yeah, so I'm excited to talk a little bit more about uh, remote life and, and what it means at Figma and things we're, we're kind of doing and to show you a little bit more of the ins and outs of the team, um, especially the community team that we're all on. 
Um, cool. So uh, let's go ahead and advance that, Tom. Thanks. So, um, so all right. Let's start off with uh, let's start off with a definition. So remote means that everyone is working from home. Uh, no, that is completely false. Uh, let's go ahead and so yeah. Uh, you know, as you might know, like, um, sorry, I'm dealing with a little bit of a delay, but uh, we've got this. So, uh, <laughs> so, you know, as you know, uh, as soon as you have folks who are outside of the office, you, you kind of have to operate as a remote team, right? Like, uh, it only takes, you could have a team of 100 people. And as soon as you have one person outside of the office, if you don't fully adapt and operate as a remote team, it kind of throws everything off. And I think that's a really important lesson that we've learned at Figma. Um, right now, of course, you know, as an industry, uh, largely, we're, we're all really fortunate to be able to work from home. But what about once we're back to kind of normal ways of working? Um, so, uh, and I also want to talk about here, you know, many of us watching this, we might have some PMs and engineers in, in here as well, which is amazing. But for the most part, we're all designers. And um, we've all also, uh, you know, our entire career uh, is, is really just built about how to, uh, uh, be empathetic to all people and all ways of working, how to, uh, how to really kind of adapt for everyone. Um, and we got to thinking like, why not try to apply that like design thinking model to the workspace? You know, it might sound silly, but uh, actually a good time to practice and, and a good way to practice is to really just treat this like a design problem. And that's what we're trying to do over at Figma. Um, so I'll share some ways soon about how we try to approach this and, and things we do to make our team feel a little bit closer together, um, even when we're really far apart right now. Cool. So uh, I thought I might ask the chat and again, a little bit delayed, so uh, no worries, but I just wanted to take a little bit of a poll and ask, um, you know, do you normally you know, under normal conditions, do you have people who are working outside of the office? Is this remote life completely new to you? Or is this something that maybe you've been practicing for a while now? Um, maybe we could have like a quick show of hands um, or just a quick uh, yes or no. I'm super curious. So um, you know, the, really the truth is no matter if you raised your hand, yes or no, um, if you, uh, um, if you've been working, you know, or sorry, if you, uh, if, if yes, or if not, uh, you've kind of been working remotely for longer than you think. Like, again, as soon as you have someone outside the office, like you're a remote team, you're having to adapt for that person, um, which means the world to that person. And also like really adjust like how you as a team work as well. Um, so this is kind of a point I really wanted to drive across because, um, yeah, it's just, it's super important to us. And it really got me thinking with all of this. I never really considered myself a remote worker, but as I'll get into a lot of the dynamics around our team um, actually kind of set us up for this. Cool. Um, the other point that I, I wanted to drive was, um, uh, Tom, if you don't mind advancing one more. Uh, oh, perfect. So, uh, you know, just like kind of questioning, you know, how can we learn and, and adopt from the changes that we're making right now at Figma um, and just in general, like as an industry. So a lot of us are kind of changing the ways that we communicate, uh, whether we're over communicating, communicating when we can or just making changes to make everyone feel welcome. And I think the thing that we're all starting to realize as an industry is this, you know, of course, like with, with the time, it, it's all really hard, but also a lot of the changes that we're making feel good and, and we want to keep those. And, and I think we're trying to think largely about how do we kind of adopt those changes to again, kind of encourage and, and um, uh, inclusivity and, and, and ensure that everyone feels as welcome as possible. Cool, so next I wanted to talk a little bit more about our community team at Figma and share a little bit of insights into um, how we all think about this and, and kind of our own setup as well. Uh, so uh, we are a community team of a couple of people and definitely growing really quickly. And you know the truth is of the uh, of everyone represented here, um, a couple of us have actually been remote uh, for a while now. So uh, Raji, another design advocate, is actually based in Utah. Uh, Claire is in Truckee. Tom is in Canada. Um, and you know, like going back to that original point that I made, like we, although many of us were in this, you know, the physical San Francisco office, several of us were outside, and we really had to start to think about like. We want Tom, Raji, and Claire, and whomever else to feel as included as possible, just like they're sitting next to us. And this was kind of a um, just a big point of the team and, and something that really got me excited about working at Figma. Um, I'm actually so far out in the East Bay over in San Francisco that almost sometimes it feels like I'm living in another state. And like, it's it's super important to me that we all kind of feel welcome. And um, yeah, just excited to like move this forward a little bit. So um, yeah, so what's it like? I, I want to get into this a little bit more so and share some of the, like the traditions and practices that we have. So um, actually, one really cool thing that we do at Figma is we have these team cards for everything. So it could be a birthday, an anniversary, a wedding, um, someone on our team recently got married, um, or just really any significant event. Um, 
we like to actually make these uh, files, which we'll have everyone jump into and add things that represent that person um, or give them the ability to kind of leave little notes. And this is an, actually an example of a couple of birthday cards that we had. Uh, mine's on the right and, and Tom's on the left. We both recently had birthdays and it's such a nice surprise uh, to receive a file that everyone's been working in. Like just to be shared a link, open that up and then see all of these notes and kind of like little tokens that people left. Um, and the thing that I got, you know, I started to realize when I was making this slide is if you think to like a normal practice, like a normal birthday practice, like typically everyone's in the office and we're passing around this card for everyone to sign. Um, but again, if you think back to just a couple of people who are remote, they don't really get to participate in that. Um, and you, you can actually see from uh, Josh's really kind note here, he said, you know, next time he's in town, coffee on me. Um, and it was just a really nice, like kind of eye-opening uh, scenario where it's like, yeah, like, of course they like, you know, whether it's a tradition of a birthday card or something else, like we just want them to be able to participate. And I think this is a really, this is one of my favorite things that we do at Figma, to be honest. So uh, I just wanted to share this. Um, we also do something really, um, I, I think just fun for for new hires, and this is um, this is a kind of a, a card that was left for me when I right after I signed my offer letter. And uh, what we do is we get the team together, and as soon as we have someone signed, we kind of create this file, and, and we all drop a little notes about why we're so excited to have that person join the team. Uh, this was the one for me again, and I, I saved this right after it was shared, and it just meant a lot. And um, it's it's also you know the thing that I wanted to do by sharing this was kind of to drive the point that we try to start this like. As much as we can, we try to encourage this like remote first mindset from the very start. So even before the person joins the team, they're in the Figma file, they can see that everyone's kind of collaborating together and it just makes it easier and, and uh, gets everyone on the same page. And being, you know, seeing this file, I didn't even realize that half of the team was actually, you know, remote and creating this. And it's um, just something that was really special. Um, the other thing that we do uh, is we've uh, kind of been practicing this new uh, weekly activity. So, um, Maybe for many of you as well, Mondays, especially right now, feel really hard, uh, even you know more hard than normal. And we wanted to do something where we kind of all get together on Monday and, and just like warm up a little bit. Uh, so we picked a new activity that allows us to basically, we create a Figma file and we'll share photos from the weekend or photos that, you know, things that make us happy. Um, we have Raji up there in the top uh, right, Tom at the bottom left, my dog in the center with her uh, config shirt on. Um, and it's just like, it's fun to get together and it's fun to like see this part of, of everyone's life uh, that they're comfortable sharing and just to get people, um, yeah, just to like start the week right. And again, it's one of those practices that's really, really small, but it kind of goes a long way. And we have a Figma file kind of documenting or at least like with the past couple of weeks in it, which has been um, fun to share as well. So um, I hope you find many of these things useful. Maybe you'll adopt some of them, but it, it's something that really makes me feel just um, special to be on the team at Figma and, and special to really, you know, think about that kind of remote first practice. We also recognize that these are sort of unusual times. And I thought I would sort of add my perspective on here. I've been working remote for Figma for um, <clears throat> close, going on two years. And uh, when I made that transition under sort of normal circumstances to go from uh, an in-person office where I was working for a tech company just outside of Toronto to working remotely for Figma, it was really weird. And uh, I would say it took me months to sort of nail down any form of a routine where I felt productive or um, like really happy or it, it just wasn't easy. And so a lot of the things that I started to do as a full-time remote person was, um, especially with the time difference, I would get up in the morning, walk my kids to school, then I would drive to the coffee shop and I would have my head's downtime out of the house because I wanted that change of environment from being in my house all the time. And um, I, I really, really sort of got used to having these types of routines. And so <clears throat> it's interesting as we've gone through this whole thing that we're going through right now, a lot of people from the team, uh, especially those outside of our core team have messaged me and say like, oh, this must be sort of like uh, every day for you because you work remote. And it's, it's really not like I, I, my kids aren't going to school. I've got two five-year-old twins that are at home. Um, I can't always, um, you know, I have to take a break sometimes to sort of like uh, to, to do family stuff. And it's, um, it's definitely not easy. So um, I think the sort of like takeaway from my perspective would be like, um, please don't beat yourself up over like how product, how productive you were during the day, or if this feels weird. Um, it's weird. Normally, uh, it's extra weird now. Um, so just keep that in mind. Um, as you're sort of like, I know mentally it can be tough, but hopefully that sort of like helps from someone who's been working for remote for, for quite some time. 
Which yeah, is a good segue I'm... into some lighthearted activities that Anthony's going to tell us about. <laughs> no, Tom. In fact, I, I'd actually build on that even a little bit uh, and just sort of just to mention like, while I am actually in the office, even when, when I joined the team, it, it took me a little while to realize that everybody was remote. It was not even apparent to me just from, or like how many people were, were remote on the team because just the communication was so fluid with, and, and the way that we were working. Um, so yeah, we're going to go ahead right now and just jump into a few of the lighthearted activities that uh, were shared with me and that I got to be a part of. And now I get to actually share out with uh, other people and customers and, and with the community as well as we're working. Uh, so let's get started. We'll go right through them. Uh, Great. So the first one that I want to talk about uh, is what we call a city builder. So this is a way to use your Figma file uh, as a uh, basically a, a little sort of a town that you're building uh, out of different pieces of uh, you know roads and buildings and and different. Um, parts of a, of a city, you can see there that in the assets panel, so for people who are familiar with, with Figma, we have a way that we store components and make them reusable. Um, and you, you can actually grab little parts of the city and pull them out onto the screen uh, and, and use them. Uh, it, it's a, just a wonderful opportunity to, it, it was a very equalizing experience, I would say, because when I did this, I was actually joining the organization and it was with my cohort of, of other people who were joining who were not necessarily designers. So it was an experience for us all to get in there and while I knew sort of knew a lot about the tool, maybe somebody else hadn't, but we were able to sort of learn together and create that experience that, that was uh, sort of just a fun way for us to, to learn about each other as well. Uh, while this exact file is not necessarily available, uh, there are other uh, examples in the community. So if you just go to Figma community for anyone who's in the, the beta, or you can just Google this as well. Um, Things like Open Peeps by Pablo Stanley, uh, illustrations put out by Vijay Verma, uh, Paper Dolls by, by Bonnie Kate Wolf, just lots of really great little uh, toolkits that you can use for building up uh, illustrations as you go. Great, the next example that I wanna mention, just sort of building on that is um, what's called Tiny Profiles. This is a file that's put out by uh, Tiny Factories. And we actually use this quite a bit in Figma workshops as well. Similar idea, you're building things, but in this case, we've taken it to the next step where instead of just building uh, a, a city, we're actually applying a little bit more of a product design approach to it. So things like some UI elements. Again, it's still an opportunity to familiarize yourself with the tool, understand how it works. Uh, and you also, again, continue to learn more and more about your teammates that you're working with. Great, the next one, uh, this one's a really fun one I find. Figma is an amazing drawing tool. So use it for drawing, use it for illustration. Um, this is 15 second drawings uh, where basically everyone will come into the file. Uh, again, these are a lot of activities that people have done for, for, for uh, a long time in person, but you can still do them remotely. Uh, here, you basically time everyone, give them 15 seconds, draw something as quickly as they can, uh, maybe do a little bit of voting afterwards as well. <laughs> um, so, uh, and here you can see Tom, great. <laughs> Tom's actually gonna be drawing a drawing for us. <laughs> awesome, great cat there, perfect. So you can see what I mean as far as a tool that you can do that. And also even just trying it on uh, mobile devices and doing drawing, super fun. Uh, the next one that I wanna speak to is uh, the, uh, Figma doubles tennis. So this is an activity that if anybody who was at config our, uh, our user conference this year, um, this is a, a great activity to get people to be a little bit more competitive with the tool and also to really get people comfortable with that idea of working together and being comfortable with other people uh, working on your design. So what it is is that you basically set up in teams of two, uh, all in the same file. And again, this file is available in the community. So uh, at Noah 11, one of our, uh, product uh, design managers who, who you can actually grab it directly from his profile. Um, and you basically have a keyword and everybody can add in drawings or uh, create their own um, clip art and things like that and pull it in. And then you pass it off to the other team. The other team actually goes in and works on your designs and it really helps to sort of get over that hunch of like, uh, other people working in my file with me. It can be a, just a great opportunity to, to break the ice with that sort of uh, activity. Uh, a few other things to talk about. So while um, beyond just hosted activity, so things we were looking at there, you know, you generally want somebody who's sort of organizing and running it. There's lots of opportunities to just uh, play games with other people. Uh, there are 
board games for things like Go and chess and checkers and Othello and all kinds of games, as well as the, um, you can see Tom's actually rolling the dice there as well. So this is a dice rolling plugin. Um, this is super great for, for things like board games, but also we use it quite a bit as a random number generator for activities and things like that. So uh, pretty, pretty powerful tools and again, all available in the community as well. The next one, um, this is getting a little bit more meta. Uh, this is uh, the idea of having, um, what we're looking at here is a file that's a digital book wall, uh, as well as a Figma art museum. So these are uh, about bringing the physical spaces into that remote environment. Uh, again, not necessarily a new concept, but very easy to do with Figma uh, as well. So you can see here that even when I joined Figma, we have a, a book wall, but we also have a remote book wall because there's a lot of people who don't necessarily have the, the luxury of getting to come in and actually flip through the books. So uh, we have a file that supports that as well. I will also call out um, uh, Tracy here as well. Uh, sorry, Tusi here for um, the uh, Figma Sh uh, Chicago user group. They recently did a, uh, a full art gallery where everybody created art and did comments on it. That file is also available for people who want to explore that as well. And lastly, we've been experimenting uh, with some pretty fun, interactive, fully hosted uh, multiplayer games um, for obvious reasons. This file is not available in the community, but we will uh, highly recommend going and checking out. There are things like quiz boards and things like that. So you can do some pretty fun uh, activities with your teams as well. So. Awesome. Thanks so much, Anthony. So um, I really just wanted to quickly walk through a couple of uh, templates and, and resources and files that I found to be really helpful, but I've also um, seen a lot of other companies and, and pe designers kind of use to actually make working right now a little bit easier. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. So the first one that I wanted to call out was um, a, a template uh, that we typically call like retro templates, but these are templates for everything. So every like there are multiple different frames in this file and every frame has a question at the top. And then your team can actually grab the sticky note component, duplicate it, they can put their name, they can change the emoji, and then they can provide feedback on that question. So at Figma, we've, template, or, uh, we've typically used these in the past for things like retros, but also just general brainstorms and, and ways to get you know, PMs, uh, engineers, whomever kind of in the file and working. Um, and all of these will have a link at the bottom for where you can actually go to grab these templates if you're curious. Uh, the next one is, um, oh, Tom, I'll let you explain this one. This is uh, super cool. Sure, this is just one that I think we're going to be, I think will become sort of like a, a new thing for a lot of people that are working remote is, you know, depending on how long this goes on for, or you might already be doing this is like, how do you onboard people and how do you sort of like get a sense of like who's who on the team and like what skill sets belong on the team. So one of the things that we've done is we've created this file where there's like these little skill compasses where each person can work on the compass, you can map out the different skills sort of around the perimeter of this little um, component and then that component updates everywhere and then um, each individual person ranks their skills so you can get a sense of like where people are strongest and where people have the most areas for growth and then sometimes some of those skills might be skills that certain people just don't have the desire to sort of like uh, pursue and that sort of like helps paint a picture of you know what skills do you want to sort of like acquire on the team um, as you uh, you know, hire more people. Uh, but one nice thing about doing that is just like doing some of these team activities together. And they're a lot more interactive than um, even sort of the in-person equivalent where you might be doing some of this on a whiteboard. And then, um, you know, you have this file that you can reference later. And then uh, for this one, if you know me, you know that I love making uh, templates and resources and resources in Figma. And something I, I came up with was um, really just an idea to make Figma uh, even slightly more or less intimidating for those who maybe don't use it pretty often. Uh, so this one was just like kind of a thumbnail template where you can actually grab these thumbnails, you can place them as the file thumbnail. And then for someone looking at all of the files in the Figma workspace, you can see things like the name really easily. You can see all of the top contributors or people who are most likely to contribute. You can add custom fields. You can even have a little statuses like whether or not like feedback has been requested or if that project's complete. So uh, this is something fun to work on. And if you're interested or have any feedback, I would love to know. You can download that there as well. Um, the next one, this is something that I wanted to highlight from an amazing designer, um, again, named Vic. I think we shared her earlier. She's a uh, designer over at Microsoft. And she created this really, really cool template that has all sorts of um, kind of design sprint activities. So things like um, how might we use, things like experience mapping, stay in the life. She even provides like some logistics and suggestions for getting started with your team. Uh, it, Microsoft was doing a lot of these things kind of before everything happened, but 
Um, it's also become really more important uh, now and, and she's provided a lot more resources in here um, for that. And this one, I just had to call out. Many of you might've seen this on, on Twitter, but this is such an awesome file. It's uh, uh, basically, it allows you to grab all of these amazing illustrations that they put together. And you can grab these timers, you can place them in your file. And then if you pair this along with the timer plugin, uh, if you just search plug plugins for timer, you'll uh, actually be able to start a countdown timer right in your file. So uh, whether it's things you know for like time box, time box activity, sprints, Pictionary, uh, whatever it might be, it's just kind of fun to like have an interactive element in the Figma file. Uh, these illustrations are just awesome and I, I definitely had to plug them. Um, the next one, Dropbox has been amazing at also publishing uh, several of their files. And this was something by a designer named Chi Chi Lin. Uh, she was also featured on a live stream a couple of weeks ago. Um, she's a product designer and she worked with everyone on her team and she kind of owned creating a distributed uh, sprint kit for anyone to duplicate and then use for their team. Um, it was really cool and pretty wonderful just to like see this come from a need where they had they had a lot of designers kind of spread across. They had different time zones happening um, as many of us do now. And uh, they wanted to just see like how they could reduce the friction around sketching and kind of sharing ideas. So uh, also just wanted to fe feature Chi Chi as well. And then finally here, um, as we all know, like feedback right now is more important than ever. But I think something that we can all agree that's always been a slightly tough and even more important now is um, the idea of you know, providing the right amount of context for feedback. Um, so Mixpanel and uh, Mark Johnson and Jess uh, uh, Chidas uh, made a template that are full of resources and visual assets to make things um, for sharing and kind of collecting feedback easy. So whether it's kind of indicating like the stage of the project or what feedback has been um, taken into account for, what they're looking for, how is fe past feedback addressed, like it's all here and it was kind of ama an amazing file just to see. Um, so I wanted to call that out as well. Cool, maybe we can take a quick little gander at what's going on in the file. Uh, looks like we've got 44 people in the file and people are starting to fill out their contact cards. Uh, you don't have to work inside this little frame if you just wanna drag one out there, uh, go for it. Uh, but yeah, it would be cool to sort of see your setups and learn a little bit about um, whoever's here and uh, yeah, feel free to draw something fun and uh, we'll come, we'll loop back in here at the end of the thing. And uh, if we have time, we'll address some questions and sort of take a look at what everyone shared. So I thought sort of like for the sort of the final uh, piece of the uh, presentation, we talk a little bit more about like how some of these things come into practice at our own workflow at Figma. And what are some like really simple, useful tips that um, I think are great, not only for working remote, but um, will be great habits to get into, um, you know, when we can all give each other a hug again. Um, I think one of the things that our team talks a lot about with people that are like looking to maybe adopt the tool or look at how they could change up their workflows is, um, you know, we try to drive the conversation to sort of like take a step back from just figuring out how do you, you know, work with your current set of tools and map those existing workflows to Figma, but think about uh, all the opportunities to create a more open culture where anyone that's you know, influencing or interfacing with designers um, in the whole product design process, how they can get involved. And I think it's a lot easier to sort of try to create sort of an open door um, where anyone can sort of join that process. Um, that's really why we call the conversation um, anyone with the link, because we think anyone that you share the link with um, should be able to come in, see the latest version uh, and work alongside with you, because we really believe that great ideas can come from anyone. I think sometimes this gets interpreted in different ways um, to say that, you know, everyone is a designer. I think designers have a really unique skill set. Um, that's not to sort of say that, you know, everyone should be in charge of the design, but I think that everyone with their own unique perspectives brings a lot to the entire process. And so um, the way I, the way I look at this is um, it might seem a little scary, you know, people might come back and say like, someone's just gonna jump into my file and say like, I don't like the colors and your whole document's gonna be littered. And like, ah, oh, that's not the feedback that I'm looking for. This is just a wireframe. Doesn't this person get that I haven't addressed our beautiful color palette yet? And it's like, that's okay. Every piece of feedback doesn't have to be addressed. Just because someone says provided feedback or left a comment on a document doesn't mean that you have to sort of like change your whole thought process and, and, and spend hours responding to all these comments. Um, because the way I look at it is if you close that door and someone has to sort of like, you know, request to see something and you have to synchronize to another tool or export what you're working on, um, it immediately goes out of date. And now all of a sudden, just that a little bit of friction of being able to get involved um, might be the difference of someone uh, sharing some thoughts or not. And so um, I really think that it's sort of like, 
as much as it seems scary, um, it's sort of like a worst case scenario to actually sort of like have that door closed. So uh, a couple of things that you can do to make that a little bit easier. Um, this is a file that I worked on that was part of just a little plug inside project. And interestingly enough, I didn't work on this with anyone. This is just for me. Uh, but one of the things that I do, and sorry if the video is a bit fast, but I, I annotate with little post-it note components, um, whatever I'm thinking at that point in time. So if I try something out, I write out what I'm trying. And if it didn't work, I write why it didn't work. It's basically translating my inner thought process that's going on while I'm sort of like in that flow state designing into post-it notes on the canvas. And what's, what's great about that is you, if you do share this file with somebody else and they're wondering how you arrived at certain decisions, there is something that they can follow along with to sort of understand your thought process. And then um, more importantly, we often forget why we made certain decisions. So if you ever wanna come back into that file, um, it's really nice to be able to sort of see uh, what you were thinking. Um, I love using the pencil tool in Figma. I think there's something really nice about drawing low fidelity things. Um, Sometimes they may not be legible to everybody else, but I try to use the pencil tool because I think there's just a certain quality to it that just communicates that like, this is rough or this is just an idea and it helps me sort of vet out things before I spend too much time uh, moving into a fidel higher fidelity. Um, I could do some of the stuff uh, in my sketchbook, which I still do of course, but being able to do it in a Figma file um, definitely sort of like opens up my thought process from a much earlier stage um, than, than not doing it um, in a file that other people have access to. Uh, another thing that this has been like a huge sort of like uh, tip bringing other people into the file is making the first page of your document a cover page. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, we just launched a hyperlinks feature. So you can um, link to different frames in your document. So like if you wanna link to a particular artboard or a particular page, um, you can guide people um, to the right part of your document. So maybe you have a page where you're collecting all of the things that have like been finalized, approved, they're like ready to get built. Um, this is a great way. So when a developer comes into the file, they can just click on ready for development and it takes them to that page that has all those assets that they need without them having to spend sort of too much time figuring out where to go. Um, and then the last thing, uh, last sort of like tip uh, before I kind of show you how this kind of looks at Figma is just this idea of preparing a pre-read. Um, there's actually a live stream that we did last week with the folks from Mixpanel who go into more detail about this, but like Getting back to that thing that I said earlier about like, is someone going to just comment on my colors at my wireframe? That might happen. That's, that's kind of okay. Like just if you, the more you accept that, the less you'll be sort of peeved about it when it happens. But by setting up a pre-read, um, you can basically be really specific about the feedback that you're looking to get. So when someone comes into your file, you know, sometimes we'll put like arrows here that just say like, start here. And then you can kind of follow along. And um, this is just a, a great way of, um, getting people up to speed with like what you're working on at this point in a point in time. The other thing here that's kind of interesting uh, is that, you know, at Figma, like in the past, we haven't really had like a dedicated person that's working on UX copy. And so often as we're going through at very early stages, we're just sort of like using whatever language comes to mind and it may not be the right language. And so rather than get somebody confused or hung up, I'll like even, um, outline some of the definitions of the language that I've used or define what certain things do so that somebody can understand what I meant um, and then they could suggest other language that might be um, you know, more universally understood as, as, much as much as possible. And so with that, I kind of wanted to go into a window of a project that I worked on at Figma um, and kind of how it started and how sort of the, how we try to like engage with the community and how we use some of these tips uh, in our own process and a little peek into sort of like what some of the, the Figma files look like uh, while we're working. So um, one of the things that we really, really put a lot of focus on at Figma is the ability to sort of like interact with the community and let the feedback that we're getting from our community of users really drive a lot of the direction of the product. Um, our team spends a lot of time um, talking to people um, just sort of like sometimes we'll jump on like a 30 minute uh, video chat and just talk through, you know, like frustrations or things that they want to do or things that they're not sure how to accomplish. And there's like tons of great feedback uh, that comes out of that that we bring back to the team. Um, and so we had a Maker Week project, which is often sort of like taking a lot of those ideas and coming up with lightweight ways to sort of validate if they could become something. And so Noah uh, and some of the other people at Figma worked on this little presentation um, about what if we could track more information about somebody's design system. 
And so, um, you know, in sort of true Figma fashion, a lot of this started just through um, social. So um, Noah struck up a conversation and just asked people to reach out. And um, here's a snippet of a conversation that happened with some folks at Microsoft who gave us some really good suggestions of like what type of metrics would be useful for them. And then that basically led to um, us creating a like really lightweight prototype that we shared in the team internally at Maker Week. And then it kind of went a little bit quiet until we started hearing more and more requests from it. And we decided to sort of like, um, you know, dust off that file um, and actually turn this into a real project. And that's kind of where I came in. So on this particular project, I was asked to help PM it. And of course, my background isn't really in being a full-time PM. My background has been um, more on the design side. And so I thought, okay, this is a cool opportunity. I've talked to so many customers about this request. I'm really excited to do this. Um, how do we start? And of course, you know, we kind of went to the spec document. So this is our Notion document where we started talking about the goals of the project and started trying to figure out how we were going to prioritize certain things also that we could get some sort of picture of, you know, how big this project was really going to be. Unfortunately, um, trying to do this in a doc was actually really tricky. So what I decided to do to satisfy sort of like my more visual urge was I got back into Figma and I started sketching these uh, amazingly beautiful sketches about what I thought this, uh, what this UI could look like. Now, I hate jumping too quickly into sort of solutioning, but sometimes doing some early solutioning to get ideas out of your head can be really great because it gives everybody a visual to sort of build subsequent ideas off of. And that's exactly what happened. Um, once I shared this file out, you can kind of see just below these sketches, a lot of the questions that I was asking in the spec document um, came into the file and then people were just like writing, yes, yes, this does, this addresses that or kind of addresses it or not really. And then we would kind of have conversations around, you know, like, well, what would we need to add to address that? And is it important? And so interestingly enough is that this isn't just designers. Um, this slide here just shows some of the interactions at really early stages. Um, this is one of the comments on the file. This is a question from Lizzie. Lizzie's an infrastructure engineer who works on our backend um, at Figma. And, um, you know, a lot of times we don't think of someone like a backend engineer being involved in our design process, like when we're not even at the wireframing stage, but it's sort of representative of how we work at Figma. It's just that it's not this like handoff where like design works on something and hands it over to engineering. Engineering and other partners within the org are like, like hand in hand working on this uh, at very early stages. Um, another sort of example of that is uh, this interaction here from Clancy. So Clancy is a data scientist at Figma and because this um, project had a lot to do with, uh, you know, visualizing data. We wanted to make sure that we had um, his expertise involved in it. And uh, I'll go into sort of later of sort of how these things all tied together, but I'll just flip through a couple more examples. Um, you know, here's Noah, here's the head of design. He's commenting on some of the, the visual design. And then you can see on this slide here, we've got a bit of our pre-read, which I um, sort of alluded to earlier, just giving people some sort of jumping off points to sort of like what we're looking for feedback on. And Another nice thing is we'll often sort of duplicate um, the page that we're currently working in uh, and make a copy of it that's reserved for like a, a design review or a crit. And people will just write things on the canvas. They'll duplicate your artboards, they'll remix things. And all of a sudden, very quickly, you just build up this like library of all these artifacts and comments and thoughts and pieces of inspiration that are now in your Figma file that you can go back and reference. It's not a photo of a whiteboard or a bunch of sticky notes that you have to collate somewhere. Um, it's right in where you know we're working and it becomes this hub um, for all the information about the project that you're, you're working on. And so by the time you get through, uh, full disclosure, this is not all on one page, but by the time you kind of get through um, this process, it, it's kind of messy, but all of these artifacts were super, super useful. And you can see a lot of the things that, um, you know, I alluded to earlier, we've got our pre-reads, we've got our little post-it note components to sort of talk through our design decisions. We've got interactions from other people, we've got comments. And then all of this stuff, uh, which looks kind of messy, was really to just, um, land in on the design of like sort of three states of a modal, um, which seems like a lot, but like this, this fluid way of working um, helped us get us there uh, really quickly. So just as a quick summary, um, throughout that entire project, we had 21 different contributors that were working in the file. Um, and this is a sort of a rundown of um, some of the people that were involved. As I mentioned, we had some infrastructure engineers and of course, front end people. We also had a data scientists, a researcher, and even like our accounts and support team get in there so they can get a head start on you know, the conversations that we're having with customers and the um, product education materials that we want to create uh, in anticipation for the launch. And all of this helps us move uh, quickly. 
So getting back to sort of what some of those advantages were, um, the infrastructure engineers that were in that file really early on, one of the things that they were able to do was actually ship things to production um, that allowed us to track real data. And so very quickly, we were able to determine, okay, regardless of what visualizations that we end up with or land on, we know we need to track these things. So if we can start tracking them now, we might be able to get some early insights into what that looks like. And so that's sort of like a good segue for um, Clancy's expertise. He was able to come in and actually build real dashboards in this tool called Mode. And so now we were able to see what actual um, customer data looked like. And because we did this while we were still wireframing, one of the things that we discovered was like, holy crap, this you know, large organization has like a thousand different libraries in it and they have like 400 different teams. And it's like, that's gonna break a lot of our visualizations. Like trying to show data from a thousand different libraries on one bar chart is like not gonna be a great experience. And so it became one of those things that we were able to sort of look, weed out ideas that um, you know, weren't gonna work for everybody. And then of course, as I mentioned, um, the entire design team was able to provide feedback in real time uh, and even participate in that crit process asynchronously for people in other time zones. Um, I mentioned accounts. I think this seems like a small one, but like getting the accounts team, the sales team engaged in sort of like what we're building gives them some insight. And what they were able to do is, um, especially with existing customers, we were able to bring people into the beta um, to give us feedback really early on if they were good fits. And so keeping everybody in the loop and giving everybody an idea of what this thing was shaping up to be um, is like a really key part of um, the process at Figma. And then by the time we got into our product review before we actually like um, started doing all of the front end engineering work and building all of this stuff, um, the stuff, the presentation that we did to leadership to sort of like get everybody aligned in what we were gonna build was a really, really easy conversation to have because everybody had been part of that process already and we had already worked through a lot of the tough discussions um, using this Figma file and uh, it just, everyone was aligned and uh, you know there was a lot of feedback saying like, wait a second, that was a really easy product review, that's it? And so uh, that's kind of a nice feeling to have rather than you know, a conversation where people are poking holes in things and uh, you, know, you end up having to go back to, to rethink things. So that's kind of like a, hopefully an idea of like how we use Figma at Figma and some of the resources that we've seen um, people creating. Maybe now is a good time uh, to sort of see what you all created in the file and, and, and Anthony and Joey, feel free to unmute if, uh, if you've been seeing any cool things in there. Uh, well, it's definitely transformed. It looks a lot <laughs> different from then the start. Oh my God. <laughs> this is great. It's super cool. Kind of a pro tip here is that um, for anyone who's in this file, uh, for example, you know, um, I can see uh, Kelly moving around here. And if I go into the list of people that are in this file, uh, maybe somebody else that's in the list. I think, uh, there we go. Uh, we can actually observe people. So um, when you click on somebody to observe them, it'll actually match their viewport. So as they zoom in and zoom out, you can see what they're working on. And we use this all the time at Crits to be able to follow along with um, and let anyone in the in sort of our design review uh, drive. Anything else to, to add to that, Anthony or Joey? And, and maybe we have maybe a couple minutes for questions. Yeah, I, I, think, I think one thing that like, and, and this is the thing that sort of getting back to that point around like collaboration can mean a lot of different things for a lot of different cases. And I think people may might, might look at something like this and go, that is just a lot of people doing a lot of strange things in one place. And yeah, that's actually a great place to start. I mean, that's how we start. That's what the icebreakers are for. That's where how you get yourself comfortable with the concept. That's how you, you move forward with it. And again, that's not really like a tool specific thing. That's just more of a practice that I think everyone should be doing more of in general. It's awkward to be so open sometimes <laughs> with what you're designing. So, um, and this is just one of the many steps of that, of that collaboration piece. Yeah. And just to add to that, I would say the other part of this is that, you know, having 42 people in the file isn't a typical working uh, scenario on like real work. It's great for like a team activity, um, but you'll usually have like, you know, maybe like 10 or 12 people that are like working together in the context of a design crit. And then people leave the file and come back in at different times as they need to, to get things. So um, it's not always like, uh, like this intense experience, like you're looking for here, but um, these are nice lightweight ways to get involved. Um, the other thing that I'll say um, is I, I can't tell you how many times at different points in my career, um, especially with short timelines where different people on the team have been tasked with the same things. It's almost like if we can throw more people at it, we can come up with more ideas and then people go off in on their own and work on these ideas. And then they'll be like, let's have a sync tomorrow and we'll come back and we'll, we'll bring all of our ideas together. And one of the things I found was like, often we landed on similar ideas or um, 
I had a different idea about somebody else's idea, but they sort of took it in a different direction. And so like being able to open up um, more visibility into what your coworkers are doing is, is, is hugely beneficial for sure. Um, and I know there was some, some questions. I know that some of them were like a little bit more like Figma centric in terms of like setting up your libraries and how to organize in terms of like maybe files and teams and permissions. Um, without sort of doing a demo, it's hard to address all of those questions. I think we can definitely address some of those questions offline. Um, but also we do like weekly events where you can do office hours with the Figma team and you can join in uh, and ask questions. So if you're interested to, new, to know more about how to accomplish something or do something in the tool, you could just go to figma.com forward slash events. And um, we have like, like very regular uh, type of content that going out and, um, you know, uh, going, maybe it's worth going back to the to the first slide um, when we when we close out. Um, if you want to follow or reach out to us any on Twitter, we're we're happy to help. Anything else, Anthony or Joey? I just think it's cool to see things like this. Like I've been using Figma again for almost five years now, and it's like just seeing all of these cursors in a file. Uh, and again, not just because I work at Figma, but I think it's just exciting. Like being designers and having this this ability to like collaborate is super fun. Um, and yeah, just thanks everyone for joining. This was really fun to share all of this. Yeah, and definitely, I, I would say again, um, and I think Tom, there might be a, a page in the um, presentation as well with the yeah the Figma events uh, link there. Um, there are certainly opportunities where we get super esoteric deep in on the product and the features of the product and things like that as well. But hopefully, this was just more some more good general information. <laughs> yeah, and I think uh, somebody was asking just to answer this question as we close out. Um, you know, do other teams use Figma to present? Um, we did this whole presentation in Figma and we, that's like our, our presentation, our go-to presentation method at Figma. Um, one of the reasons being is that often you're sharing presentations about things that you're designing on and not having to take it out of the tool that you're working in to do the presentation. It's just like one less thing to do. Um, so uh, yeah, here's a, here's our, here's our slide deck. We will definitely share it afterwards so that you can poke around. There'll be lots of links to some of the resources that we shared. And uh, if you want to follow any of us or, uh, uh, hit us up on Twitter with your questions or visit our Figma profiles on the sort of community that we're launching. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely reach out and thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks, thanks everyone. everyone. Thank you so much. But, but... Oh my God, Pri, did you enjoy <laughs> it the same as I did? I feel like this was so much useful tips. Thank you a lot. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was also a lot of fun because in between I, I was completely not paying attention to what you were saying. And I was so deep into the file that you shared. And I was like, oh, I'm <laughs> everyone's like playing together. And then I was like, oh, shit, I'm missing out everything that they're talking about. So I was like, <laughs> okay. but it was, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, thank you so much. Definitely um, a lot of amazing tips and also just a very refreshing session. <laughs>